Assalamualaikum and very good day to everyone. In this topic seat, we're going to learn about Euler sparkling of Coulomb, which is the last topic in mechanics of solid. This is the contents for this topic, which is included the introduction for Euler sparkling of Coulomb, the effective length of the column, the Euler's formula, and also we're going to calculate the critical buckling stress. This is the cost outcome and learning outcome for this topic. Which is the cost outcome addressing the CO1, compute the support reactions and internal forces for simple determinate and indeterminate structures by using first principle of engineering sciences. For learning outcome, at the end of this topic, students should be able to understand the behavior of columns and concept of critical load and buckling. In second one, students should be able to determine critical buckling load and stress of column. So what is the elastic buckling of column? A structure member subjected to either compressive load fail in a manner depends upon their geometrical properties rather than their material properties. So for the example of geometrical properties is such as shape and size. Long slender structural members will suddenly bow with large lateral displacement when subjected to either compressive load. This is the example of the structural member when it is subjected to either Compressive load. This is the uh, long slender column will cause instability to the members. Usually, slender member will fail due to buckling. The members will regain its initial straight shape if it is exceptionally long and slender. There are two types of column, which is the first one is short column. Short column usually fails by direct compression. And also its length is lesser than the critical buckling length. This is the example of short column. As you can see in the figure C and D where the short column fail by direct compression when subjected to axial compressive load. This is the second type of column which is the slender column. Slender column is the column which is the length is greater than the cross section. So we call it as a slender column. Usually the slender column will fail by buckling where the length of the column is greater than the critical buckling length. Okay, this is the example for slender column. When uh, it is subjected to as you look, the column will buckle rather than fail in compression like in short column. For this type of column, Euler's formula is used to calculate failure strength in long columns. Long and slender members subjected to an axial compressive force are called columns. When this column is subjected to an axial compressive force, the lateral deflection that occurs is called buckling. The critical load is the maximum axial load that a column can support when it is on the verge of buckling as shown in figure 1a. So when this long and slender column subjected to the axial load which is greater than the critical load, the column will buckle and therefore deflect laterally as shown in figure 1b. Figure A shows when long and slender column subjected to an axial compressive force. If the force P is greater than the critical buckling of column, it will deflect laterally which is what we call buckling of column as shown in figure B. The critical buckling of column is the maximum load that a column can resist before it starts to buckle. Buckling occurs when a long flexible member is loaded longitudinally in compression and deflects near the center of its length when with a considerable amount of displacement. This is the example of long and slender column failure mode which is this column fail due to buckling. As you can see in the figure, the column deflects near the center of its length with uh, some amount of considerable displacement. In order to calculate the failure strength in long and slender column using Euler's formula, there are several assumptions or limitations uh, in order to use this formula. The first uh, assumption is that we assume the column is axially loaded column, which is the column is perfectly aligned with the axis of the column. 
and the second assumption is we assume that the column is perfectly straight so that uh, there is no initial buckling at all the third one is the column is isotropic and homogeneous material where the chemical and mechanical properties are same at any point of the column the fourth uh, assumption is that material behave within elastic properties in order to calculate the critical buckling of column, one should know the critical buckling length, which is also known as effective length of the column. So this uh, effective length is dependent on several, several factors, which is the shape and size of the cross-section. And the second one is the relationship between length of the column and its lateral dimensions. And also, it also depends on the degree of fixity at the ends. Okay, this is the end condition for columns. There are several types of end condition. The first one is both end pin. So the effective length of the column is 1 uh, L. The second one is 1 M pin and the other fixed in direction, which is uh, also known as partially restrained. So for this effective length, it is 0 0.7 L. The third one is um, both end fixed in direction, which is also known as fully restrained. This uh, effective length for this column is 0 0.5L. The fourth one is one end fixed in direction and the other one is free. So for the effective length of this column is 2.0L. This is the example of how we calculate the effective length of the column. The first one is where the both of the column both end of the column is pin N as shown in figure A. So for this type of column, the effective length is equal to the length of column. For the figure B, which is the column is pin N and the other end is fixed N. So the effective length of the column is equal to 0.7 L. At, uh, for figure C, where the both uh, end condition of the column is fixed, the effective length of the column is equal to 0.5L and figure D shows when the column is fixed and the other end is free ends. So for the effective length of this column is equal to 2L. This is the Euler's formula that we use to calculate the critical buckling load of column which is the Euler's critical buckling load of column a maximum axial load on column just before it begins to buckle. This load must not cause the stress in column to exceed proportional limit where E is the modulus of elasticity of material and I is the least second modulus of inertia of column also known as moment of inertia and LE is the effective length of the column which we calculate before this using depends on the and conditions of the column. To calculate the critical buckling stress, it is given by the critical buckling load divided by the area of column where the critical buckling load, which is PCR, is equal to pi square EI over LE square. Critical stress also can be expressed by pi square E divided by LE over R square where r is the radius of gyration given by the square root of moment of inertia divided by a it is also similar to the pi square e divided by kl over r square which is le is equal to kl assalamu alaikum in designing structure member such as column pin and any other types of structure member there is factor safety applied to the design load expected to carry by a member. So this factor of safety is a safety margin given in design so that the member will not fail when the load is increased beyond the elastic limit or when the size is reduced. A structure member must be designed so that its ultimate load is larger than the load the member is expected to carry. This smaller load is known as the allowable load or working load or design load. Factor of safety can be expressed by ultimate load divided by the allowable load which is P ultimate divided P allowable or it also can be expressed by the ultimate stress divided by allowable stress.
the effector of safety is varies between 1.4 to 3.